we think of the Earth's carbon cycle, we tend to ignore what's beneath our feet. We seem to forget that like oceans and forests, soils also live and breathe. The top few centimetres of soil are the basis of all life on dry land. Soils contain more carbon than all vegetation and the atmosphere combined. People have got this total dissociation with their mother, the soil. You know, everything we eat, everything we wear, 60 to 70 percent of all industrial inputs come from the soil, and yet we've lost that relationship. As fossil fuels and shrinking forests overload the atmosphere with excess carbon, what part can soils play in a solution to global warming? The answer may lie beneath the rainforests of central Amazon in yellow soils long ago turned black, known by the locals as terra preta. If you live in the central Amazon, you can't avoid uh, bumping into terra preta. These are anthropogenic soils, man-made soils from way back before the Europeans arrived in the Amazon. Johannes Lehmann studies how terra preta can store twice as much carbon as other soils, even after thousands of years. The evidence is there, and that's what drives us. Along with bits of pottery, the ancient soil is mixed with charcoal. What makes the charcoal different from your barbecue is that it comes from wood burned in ovens without much oxygen, a process known as pyrolysis. So this char organic matter in this terra preta is much more efficient in doing what we want all soils to do, to retain nutrients for plants, to reduce the CO2 that goes out of the soil, to enhance soil productivity um, and store more carbon. This old idea has motivated scientists to develop a new technology, which they call agrichar. Could this be the new black gold? that makes energy, improves agriculture, and saves us from climate change. That's the inspiration behind this international conference in New South Wales. Mild-mannered soil scientists are politely plotting a global revolution. One of the most important things we need to do when we actually start to build this initiative into a world movement, as it were, is to actually relate it directly back to individuals. The ability of agrichar to restore soils and increase fertility is one thing. Now they're impatient for the world to use agrichar as a weapon against global warming. The IPCC has said soil carbon sequestration is a proven means of mitigating greenhouse gases. The Australian of the Year is right behind them. Your technology offers the possibility of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere via plants, fast-growing plants, and for all intents and purposes, permanently sequestering that carbon in the soil. Tim Flannery is confident that the research by people in this room can have a global impact. Now we don't know how big the potential is for using this globally, in other words how many gigatons of carbon we can sequester, but my suspicion is it's large. Agrichar is especially relevant to our continent, with its old eroded soils starved of organic carbon. 75% of Australian soils have got less than 1% organic carbon to have a, a, a healthy productive agricultural system. Um, you know, 2% organic carbon is, uh, is a level where, where you'd like to be at. A little bit of the Amazon has come to rural New South Wales, where Lucas van Zwieten and his team are adding agrichar to old dairy paddocks. Restoring the carbon content feeds life in the soil and increases respiration. As the soil breathes, the gases are collected in chambers. This is uh, one of the very first long-term field sites. We are hoping that this trial will last five to ten years. By analysing the gas content, they test how agrichar changes the greenhouse gases emitted from each hectare of soil. We'll do this uh, every couple of days. These have been capped for two hours. 
and we're basically looking for greenhouse gases evolved in that period of time. Adding up to 10 tonnes of agrochar per hectare reduces the amount of carbon dioxide given off while tripling the weight of the crop or its biomass. As well as that, they measure another gas that's important for global warming, nitrous oxide. Certainly nitrous oxide is a very serious greenhouse gas. It's uh, 310 times more potent than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Yeah. One of the things that uh, really was quite surprising and we did not expect this result was that uh, the emissions of nitrous oxide from soil were significantly reduced. By adding char, we've shown that we can reduce nitrous oxide emission fivefold. Now, the secrets of this ancient soil from the Amazon are being tried out in Australia. This avocado plantation is the first real farm where the benefits of char are being scientifically tested. For the last 10 years, Bonnie Walker has been bringing her soil back to life. We have uh, about 1,100 uh, avocado trees on this farm. How important is the, the soil health to you? It's everything. So we've had to work hard on soil biology. What we've done is we've added as much organic matter as possible. Today, Lucas takes his research to Bonnie's farm. That's the first time we're working with uh, the privately owned farm to, uh, to trial the char. Yep. We want to see an improvement in soil pH. We expect uh, maybe improvements in soil structure, uh, water holding capacity. The structure of the agrochar is very porous, I understand. So this is going to create a lot of surface area for nutrients to hold on to. So this is very important because th the fertilizer you do put out will stay there. The challenge is to make enough agrochar. The more carbon, the better. And I, I don't think we can produce enough char in the country to, to improve all of our soils. Which brings the conference here to a guided tour of the Best Energies Pyrolysis Plant north of Sydney. We're the oldest renewable energy company in Australia. We've been working here on renewable energy projects for 25 years. But it's Adriana Downey shows off the agricultural benefits of char with a demonstration corn crop. This one in the end here is just corn plants straight in the soil, so we didn't make any amendments or additions to the soil. This one next to it, 3A here, we have 50 tonnes per hectare of chicken manure char in the soil. So that's the differences we're, we're seeing there. Char, no char. But the main attraction here is the pyrolysis plant. It cooks biomass without oxygen to make a renewable fuel called syngas, a flammable mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The black waste left behind is exactly what the soil scientists want to use as agrochar. One person's trash is another person's treasure. Today they're using ordinary garden waste. It feeds in through a conveyor into the main dryer, which is a rotary dryer. You can see it there spinning around. The kiln is heated to 550 degrees by burning the syngas. So it's actually our own energy that we're producing in the plant that we uh, are firing it on. The win-win is that half of the carbon in the biomass makes the syngas fuel, while the other half stays in the char. The amount of agrochar trickling out the end of this pilot plant won't change the world, but making it on an industrial scale certainly could. What we put in provides enough energy to run the process as well as then export energy for other people to use for their processes. And because the energy comes from plants that absorb carbon dioxide as they grow, it should be carbon neutral. From all of the technologies that are available, this is really a, a quite a unique one. It's the carbon pump concept of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and putting it long term into a sink. That's what makes this energy so different. Better than low carbon or zero carbon, it's actually carbon negative. The conference may be over, but these agrochar revolutionaries will keep spreading their message around the globe. Johannes has a vision of growing energy crops to power agrochar factories. In my view, it has to play a significant role to secure our future. It does seem too good to be true, but I've looked at it from every angle, and I, I failed to see uh, the fault in the system. In Australia, 
Tim intends to use his influence to help make agrichar competitive. The key barrier with this technology, it seems to me, is being that people have refused to put a price on carbon. So they've refused to put a price on the pollution that's now dramatically altering our planet, and therefore they haven't seen the true value in this new technology. For Lucas, it does more than store carbon and improve productivity. The beautiful thing here is that, that we know we've got a tangible decrease in, in greenhouse gas emissions from soil uh, through the use of char. And Bonnie is proud to be the vanguard for introducing agrichar to Australian farms. This could be a very easy way to store carbon. You might end up farming carbon as well as avocados. Well, we could. We could. It's very exciting.